Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the new Jones Hovercraft 2.0. This board features Jones's directional rocker, which is really just directional cam rocker. So you get rocker in the nose, camber underfoot, smaller rocker in the tail. You do have a 3D shaping in the nose and tail of this board. So what this does is it gives you the load and pop of traditional camber underfoot. That's gonna give you the drive of this board. But that rocker in the nose and the tail is gonna give you more optimal powder float as well as ease of entry in and out of turns. This board's available in 144, 148, 152, 156, 160, and 164. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on an overcast day. There was snow falling. There was eight plus inches of fresh snow off the groomers. The groomers had been dusted. You had crust, chop, chunder, just like fast corduroy. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So clearly with the shape of this board, it's gonna have a directional flex, meaning softer nose, stiffer midsection, the only thing that's different is the tail does get a little bit softer where that rocker is and you have a key flex point right in front of that back foot that allows you to just push in, flex it, and raise the front of this board up. The torsional flex is noticeable but not overwhelming. When it comes to stability, you do get some chatter in that rocker in the nose that resonates back underfoot. It's not enough to really foot fatigue you, but it is there. In more choppy terrain, this board tends to get on top of everything and just push through it. I want you to understand this isn't the snappiest deck in the powder free ride category. It does have camber underfoot, and when you load it up and roll back on the tail, you'll get a little spring. What you really want to do is when you load it up, disengage the front and try to overflex it from inside that rear foot back through the tail. That's where you're going to get the most snap from it. You won't have a problem porpoising in fresh snow or launching a side hit with it. I want to talk about buttering on this board. With the tail, it's high speed wheelies. With the nose, if you pop a 180, you've got 12 millimeters of spoon shape in that nose. So it would want to roll to one side or the other and just revert me around really quickly. It is a little bit of a stiffer flex. It takes more effort than you would think to actually engage it with the shaping of this board. So be aware of that. So this is where the big difference is between the old Hovercraft and the 2.0. This doesn't carve as well. It's not the same board. The old one, you could lay a trench, you could really rip a carve ankle steer with it. With this one, you have to be more nuanced and finesse it more. Those longer drawn out carves are really where it stands out. It wants to swoop from one side of the trail to the other. It doesn't have the quickest edge to edge engagement and it just doesn't feel as locked in, which is fine. They went with a more powder focused approach to this board and it really does differentiate itself from the Ultra Mind Expander or the regular Mind Expander now. This is truthfully a more powder focused board, which means you really don't need it for resort carving. Can it carve? Yes. Is it the best at it? No, I think there's better in the powder category than this. Who's this board for? The Powder Hound that wants optimal powder float. There is not a doubt in my mind that this thing will give you optimal powder disbursement. This board floats, it floats well, it rides pow well, that 3D shaping works. This is a true successor to the 1.0 Hovercraft. It is absolutely amazing in everything but carving. That's where it lacks. What I like about this board is that if you flex your knee in and bend the board right in front of your back foot, the whole nose and center of the board rises up out of the snow and you just are able to slash and float so much better. It's a good board for what it is. It cuts through chop with ease. This board is heavy. I'm not going to lie about it. This actually felt like a super heavy board when I picked it up and I was like, oh, this thing's got some girth to it. And it shows when you get into choppy terrain, it just plows through everything in its path. Comparable boards, the Telos Deros. The Battalion Camel 2, the Amplid Morning Glory. Binding recommendations, the Jones Mercury, the Battalion Astro Full Wrap, the Union Atlas. This has been my review of the Jones Hovercraft 2.0. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, 
but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.